So my R10 finally arrived about a week ago. Matter of fact, I'm shooting on it right now and I got a whole bunch of stuff to tell you about it. Now I'm not gonna bore you with a bunch of scientific experiments and I'm gonna try my best not to use any complicated camera jargon. Instead, I'm gonna tell you about the main strengths of this camera as well as about a few of its weaknesses. So let's start with the low light and the high ISO performance. So generally speaking, crop sensor cameras are not gonna do as well in low light and high ISO environments as full frame sensors. And that's most definitely the case with the R10 as well. And while it doesn't do as good as my EOS R, it does leaps and bounds better than the M50. So that being said, I really wouldn't use it past 3200 ISO because it starts to fall apart real quick after that. And it's worth noting that the full frame EOS RP is very similar to the EOS R in terms of low light performance. And that's priced right around the same price as the R10. So you may want to consider that if you're looking for a full frame option in the same price range. Now the reason that the R10 does so much better in low light than the M50 and all of other Canon's previous APS-C cameras is because it's giving you 4K which is actually down sampled from 6K. So the noise pattern isn't that ugly blotchy type of noise that you see on the M50. And there's also in camera noise reduction which you can set to low, standard and high. And if you want, you could turn it off altogether. Now, while I'm pleased with the image that's coming out of this camera, as it has pretty good noise performance and it doesn't fall apart when I push and pull the colors and color grading, there is one thing you should take note of. The 10 bit 422 option to me really isn't usable because you're forced to use it in a mode called HDRPQ. And when I shot in that mode, I didn't really like the results. Apparently, it's intended for when you're going to output HDR and it's not meant for a regular output. And that's kind of a letdown because in the R7, you get C log and 422 10 bit without having to shoot an HDRPQ. But there's always a workaround. So, what I did is I just installed Cine Style and I'm getting pretty good results out of the 8 bit footage. I could color it and push and pull it pretty drastically and it doesn't fall apart. So the codec seems to be real efficient in that regard. So it's not the end of the world, but it would have been nice to have 10 bit 422 in a normal shooting mode. Now you may be thinking, then why don't you just get the R7 since it has 10 bit and C log, etc. And while that is true, the problem with the R7 is that ridiculous IBIS that's in Canon cameras. The IBIS is great for photo shooters, but for video shooters like me, it really messes up the shots, especially when you have it on an ultra wide or a wide lens. You get those crazy looking corner wobbles. And I don't know what's wrong with Canon. They don't give you the option to just turn off the IBIS and be able to use your lens stabilization by itself. You either have to have both IBIS and your lens IS turned on or both of them turned off. Now in the case of the R10, it only has digital stabilization and it doesn't have IBIS. And in reality, Canon's digital stabilization is actually quite good, especially when paired with a lens that also has IS. So right now we're in the highest quality 4K mode. I got the Sigma 18 to 35 on there with the Viltrox speed booster, which is making this focal length a little bit more palatable for vlogging because normally it would be a bit too tight. Now normally I'd be using the Mica drop-in ND filter which is an amazing piece of kit but because I got the Viltrox speed booster on there I can't use the drop-in ND filter. Another great option are these filters that Freewell sent me. You can just stack all the various filters without having to screw anything in because they're all magnetic. Even though you can easily take them on and off you can still turn them so that that way you can adjust the ND or the CPL or whichever filter that you got on there. So so shout out to Freewell for sending these out and I'll put links in the description below to all the gear that I talked about. Now moving on to the high frame rate options for slow motion video. So when you're in 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second, you can shoot in 4K that doesn't have any additional crop other than the normal APS-C crop. But once you go to 60 frames per second in 4K, there's an additional crop on top of the 1.6 times crop that already comes standard in Canon APS-C cameras. You can also shoot at 120 frames per second for that super slow motion, which is a nice feature to have, but it's only available in 1080. Now one of the best things that Canon did for the R10 was removing the 30 minute record limit. They capped it at two hours. Now in my test, I was able to shoot the whole two hours without the camera overheating and I was shooting in the highest quality mode possible and it was a relatively hot day as well, although I was inside when I did the tests. In terms of dynamic range, I was actually pleasantly surprised. I was able to recover the highlights and the shadows pretty nicely. And in my experience, I would say, it's been much better than the M50 and probably right on par with my EOS R or maybe even just a slight bit better. Another thing I really like about the R10 is the ergonomics. It's just barely bigger than the M50, but the grip is extremely deep and it almost feels as good as the EOS R, which is ergonomically one of the 
nicest cameras that I've ever held. Another thing that really blew me away is the eye autofocus. It's extremely sticky and I've never seen it hunting as of yet. And not only does it track people, but also vehicles and animals. And all of that works in the photo mode as well as the video mode. A few other welcome additions that it has that was missing on the M50 is a lock button so that you can lock in your settings so you don't accidentally change them. It also allows you to monitor your audio while you're recording. It also has the advanced hot shoe connector so that you can put a microphone on the camera without having to use any wires. So taking into consideration all these new video features, the awesome photo capabilities of this camera, that sweet Canon color science that we all come to love, along with the ergonomics and ease of use, then I would say that the EOS R10 is most definitely worth the price. Now one of the main concerns that I've heard people voice about the R10 and the R7 is the lack of lenses. But me, I'm not really looking to buy any new RF lenses because I have some amazing EF and EFS lenses such as the Sigma 18-35 which I have to say looks amazing paired with the R10. So what I do, I use the speed booster from Viltrox which gives me an extra stop of light and gets rid of some of that crop. And when I need to use a normal adapter, I use this one that Viltrox just sent me out. It has like, a, this is the pro version of the adapter. The normal one is like 40 bucks or something like that. This one is 79, but it has like a locking mechanism so that there's no wiggle whatsoever in the lens. And I think the normal adapter they have is fine, but this pro version is better if you have like a super big telephoto type of lens that's real heavy as the R10 body is kind of small. Matter of fact, I'll leave Amazon links to all the gear that I talked about in this video. And I'll also leave a link to the Viltrox store where you could pick up this adapter or the speed booster. And if you use my coupon code FULAN, then you can get 10% off anything that you purchase off of the Viltrox store. Now, if you're thinking about purchasing the R10 or the R7, or if you've already purchased one of them, then you really need to watch this video right here because there's five things that Canon didn't tell you about, but fortunately, I found awesome workarounds for all of them. Make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, and also subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell icon so you don't miss future videos. It's your boy Fulan, and I'm out. Peace.